What's up, Doombots? Tony Scangili here with kind of a review of the starting characters uh, after a couple months of play, a couple months of patches, and right before the official global launch. Now, they might make some changes, uh, but as far as I know, every player who started the game in the last couple of months, or at least since patch 8.0, has started with the exact same characters. Uh, that is Sully, Buzz Lightyear, Mickey, and Ariel. Uh, at least for heroes anyway, as well as two spells, one of them being Trigger and one of them Magical Meteor. I'm basically just going to take a quick look at these characters as the game has changed a little bit and determine which ones, if any, are worth investing in, uh, where they will be useful, and which ones maybe you want to skip. The truth is there's no bad characters as of right now in this game, just less impactful characters, and as the entire rule of the game seems to be uh, take a character uh, as high up as you can before working on the next one or build teams up before uh, working on the next one it's kind of relevant to keep track of where you're going to get value so we're going to start with ariel a character i already did a character spotlight on so i don't have to go too much detail uh, she is a pretty decent healer with a big damage ultimate attack a leadership ability that grants maximum health to everyone, which is phenomenal in the early game. It's giving you a little bit extra survivability in the fights to help you sustain. Pretty decent passive that gives a nice buff to whoever it hits, and a nice little basic attack that chains to everyone who has slow. Works very well with Sully, but nothing really has changed as far as her kit or where she's useful or how much value you're gonna get out of her. What has changed is the towers. The towers now have a requirement based on certain origins, downtown, mythical, oceanic, kingdom. And because you start with at least one oceanic character in Ariel, it's a pretty good idea to utilize her for as long as you can uh, in the early game before shifting out. And you'll see that when you enter the first tower. Now, the next character we'll look at is Sully. Sully is a tank character with moderate damage. Uh, the basic has an opportunity to call for an assist. The special, first special, I'm calling this the special, is a AOE for, again, moderate damage with a chance to inflict fear. Fear uh, prevents characters from dodging or uh, having or avoiding debuffs, gains taunt, and a chance to gain defense up per hero teammate. So all in all, pretty decent tank. His ult is the only thing he does that really does damage. And if the character is afflicted by fear, you see where it goes. The thing that makes Sully interesting is that he's a downtown character, one of the tags required for the second tower. So having early access to Sully is really gonna help you build out that team and complete the second tower. So Sully, great character all around, not uh, truly a master of anything, but a good tank. And if you start off with him, you shouldn't regret too much investment, at least to, as you always hear me say, the fours. Level 40, gear tier four, up to four stars. Uh, another benefit to Sully is as a downtown hero character and as a tank, there are a lot of events that benefit you from having access to four, five, six star characters. So while you may not want to work Sully all the way up to seven, getting a, a little bit of forward momentum on him is definitely going to help you in a lot of the events as they are right now. Uh, Buzz, another downtown character, but a little bit more valuable than Sully. Now he has pretty decent damage on his basic. His special has a also, pretty decent chunk of damage. Uh, if Woody is present, Woody is an event character at the time of this video, so it's unlikely you're going to have him, but you have a chance to assist. That's not bad. His ult is really what uh, his kit is kind of designed around. It is a pretty huge chunk of damage, uh, and the fact that it does bonus damage if the target is infected by vulnerable, huge, because that means you're going to crit for even more damage than you would have normally and 
the stun incredibly relevant. He's also relatively fast, so you can probably get a stun off really early. And if you're doing early game PvP arena, uh, couldn't make the difference between a win or a loss. As for his passive, <laughs> interesting. Only works with Toy Story characters, so lose a little bit of value. But what you do gain when you invest in Buzz early is the ability to take part in the Toy Story event. So while he is a downtown character, so it's going to help in the second tower, and he is a pretty decent uh, all-around damage dealer, the one benefit to Buzz is the higher up he is, the further you will be able to progress in the Toy Story event to unlock Woody, which will then allow you to unlock Jesse, which of course will then allow you to unlock Bo Peep. So every investment in Buzz is not really lost, uh, especially in the early game when you get him. Uh, it's okay to put a little bit of him. Again, at least to the fours, you should be okay. Uh, Mickey is the last. Now, I can tell you all of my knowledge of Mickey comes from other players. I skipped Mickey relatively quickly, not because I didn't like him, but because at all points, I had a, a better series of kingdom characters to work on because of spending or luck or the way events panned out for me. So Mickey is a phenomenal character. Just getting that out there. His basic moderate damage with a 30% chance to inflict defense down for two turns. And that's very low investment. So that character is going to be taking extra damage on basic. His special. Uh, it is a double attack. It is a double attack. Each attack has a chance to crit, and every single one has a chance to decrease the speed meter. That's huge. That's You technically can take a character down 60% turn meter. That's a lot. Uh, even if it only hits you know, 20% one or two times, that's still a decent turn rewind. And it's not too bad damage. And... Just like with Sully, his ultimate deals AoE damage to all opponents present and a 30% chance to inflict slow for two turns, making Ariel's basic even better. And he just also has a chance to assist, and his assist has a chance to inflict defense down. So, great character all around. Phenomenal uh, part of the beginning player team, and... And he has the kingdom tag, which is a tag that's going to be required to progress in the third tower. So as of right now, of the four characters you start with in this game, or these four specific characters, there's almost no downside in investing in them. The only thing that I can say I would probably take a moment on is determining what the current event is and seeing if there's a better path to success, whether you're free to play or if you're willing to spend, if you work up towards progressing in the current event. This game does seem to be very event driven. Uh, so while you may just pick up the game, you may be watching this video and going like, these are the characters, are they good? Yes, but they might not be better than if the Aladdin event is running and getting access to an early Aladdin or Jafar Jasmine. And you should be okay. As for the spells, they... <laughs> Magical Meteor is a pretty interesting spell. It is just a giant damage attack. It does 50 damage plus 12 per your level, so it will do more and more. The problem with Magical Meteor is it's designed to be an early game spell and not a late game spell. You don't gain enough damage per level for it to make a meaningful uh, attack by the time you reach le max level, which at the time of this video is level 60. The extra couple hundred damage is not going to make a difference when characters have 10 to 15,000 health. So the spell does not hold a lot of weight. Obviously, if you invest in the spell, it does more and more damage. But comparative to other spells, mm, great in the early game. I wouldn't go out of your way to uh, farm it, focus on it, invest in it. Uh, it will be replaced relatively quickly, usually bit by either an event spell or one of the spells you unlock in the tower. Trigger, on the other hand, at least as of right now, <laughs> Trigger, he has a lot to work with. For example, most spells, they have an effect and they're done. Trigger is one of a few that makes a new character appear on the screen. 
And Trigger has a lot of health, especially at lower levels. You're going to find that your Trigger is going to survive more than maybe your Mickey will in the early game. And your opponent's Triggers are also going to survive longer than any of their or your characters. And you can resummon Trigger when his health gets low anyway, just to make sure that you start with a new one. He also uh, attacks multiple times. If he kills a character, he gets to take another turn. Uh, as you invest in him, as you can see, I have a level three trigger. Uh, he does a decent chunk of damage. It's not a lot. It's more of an execute, if you're familiar with that term. It's when a character is low, you're going to use it. But it also has a chance to inflict continuous damage. Uh, if you're familiar with other games, Poison or Bleed Stack, it's a damage ability that waits for the beginning of that player's turn to take effect. And it's pretty solid. In the early game, you're going to hate seeing triggers. You're going to love your trigger and hate other triggers. There are a couple of other spells you might get, but this is probably the one you're going to be leaning on until you pick up a very high impact marquee spell to replace him, keeping in mind that Meteor is going to go the second it's done. So trigger is great. There's uh, some added benefit to using trigger with uh, some of the kingdom characters you might be interested in, like Sheriff of Nottingham or Robin Hood. So you won't necessarily regret much of the investment in Trigger. He does kind of lose a little bit of his luster at the fours. Like once most of your characters are level 40, Trigger doesn't do as much uh, until you keep him, you know, as leveled. And, and that becomes a little bit of a difficult issue. But in the early game... And even on some defenses in Club Conquest or PvP Arena, you'll find you'll still find triggers because overall they just extend the time of the game, which might help you in a timed node or in a game mode where it might be a very even match. So that's kind of it. That's the review of the heroes characters you start with in the game. Uh, the only thing you'll notice is a giant empty slot here. Uh, and that's what you're going to start working on. And that's for another video. Obviously, I'm also going to do some villain character video after this. So comment below and let me know if you had the same experiences with these characters or if you skipped them completely or if you're completely free to play and you currently have the maxed out entire team that we got for free. I just want to get a, a bunch of information from you guys about whether or not you find as much value in these characters as I do for a new player. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangili, and I'll catch you later.